Alright, welcome back to our subversion track. So, natapos na tayong mag-install ng software natin. So, now we're going to proceed dun sa uh, workflow. Kunwari, paano natin gagamitin yung mga uh, yung subversion and in essence, halos lahat ng mga client, server, and merge type na version control systems use this approach or this workflow. So, yung workflow, um, sa Red Bean Book, there's this uh, basic work cycle na discuss rito kung paano nyo gagamitin yung subversion did, uh, in your day-to-day -day work. So, yan. Um, it's just a basic uh, update your working copy, make changes, review changes, fix mistakes, resolve conflicts, and commit the changes. So, uh, yan. Uh, yan lang. Uh, dito rin na-discuss yung mga commands. Uh, for this lesson, we're not going to discuss the commands in detail. Actually, this track, napaka-konti ng commands na gagamitin natin. So, uh, halos wala namang kaso if you're going to use uh, the command line approach or you're going to use uh, tortoise SVN. Kasi napakakunti lang ng commands na gagamitin natin. So, for instance, yung SVN checkout na discuss na natin yun last time, I don't uh, I don't think kailangan ko pang ulitin yun or we're going to have to do a lesson to do that. Kasi SVN checkout space URL space ano lang yun. Uh, yung folder name na gusto nyo gawitin. Then, yung SVN, itong uh, update your working copy, SVN update lang yan. So, we're in sa C type sa test pro pro project, it's just SVN update. Yan. Yan lang yung command. Uh, yung merging changes, review changes, uh, pati yung commit, uh, yung tong resolving conflicts, uh, we're going to create other lessons for these parts. Pero, for this lesson, again, workflow lang. Anyway, about this workflow, uh, it's okay, pero, para sa akin, hindi siya ganun ka-clear. Uh, I prefer yung workflow na ginagamit, well, ginamit ko ever since sa toto ang gumamit ng version rule, which is like this. So, yung basic na workflow natin is, yan. Una, update mo yung copy mo. Then, kung up-to-date na yung uh, code mo, proceed ka ng step 6. Pwede ka na mag-commit. Uh, so, uh, understandably, before mo gagawin yung step 6 yan, uh, dapat na nagawa mo na yung code mo, na-test mo na yung code mo. Otherwise, handle mo yung conflicts, kung meron. Uh, then, re-retest mo yung code mo ulit. Kasi, possible na pag nag-update ka ng copy kahit walang conflict, baka hindi nagagana yung code mo. So, fix is necessary. So, kung naayos mo na yun, re-update yung code. Then, pag okay naman yung code, wala, wala nang update, ibig sabihin up to date, wala ka nang kailangan gawin, diretso ka na sa step 6, which is to commit your changes. So, yun yung... Uh, in yung workflow. So, teka lang ah. Okay, so nag-shift ako from uh, uh, screencast to video camera kasi napaka-importante yung sasabihin ko tungkol dun sa ating uh, workflow sa version control. So, dun sa ating 6 steps, meron dun tatlong steps na kailangan pagtuunan natin ng pansin uh, kasi madalas, well, hindi yun masyadong na uh, lalaman kaagad ng mga developer kaya unahan ko na kayo kung ano yung mga kailangan nyong mag-focusan so yun yung steps 3 steps 4 at step 6 uh, so steps 3 yun yan, re resolve changes ang kailangan nyong alamin dun is pag meron kayong nakuhang merge conflict nag-pull kayo, nagkaroon ng merge conflict kailangan nyong kausapin yung tao na uh, kung saan nag-result nag, nag, uh, in a uh, conflict. Kunwari, kung sino yung last na nag-commit ng file na yun, kailangan yung kausapin bago nyo i-resolve yung conflict on your own. Uh, importante yun kasi, again, we're using revision control to facilitate yung ating uh, communication, collaboration with our team members. At kung meron 
uh, case na hindi nagkaroon ng uh, uh, hindi nagmatch kaya nga nagkaroon ng conflict uh, that's a symptom na may problema tayo with our communication and collaboration so kailangan na kailangan nyo instead na ah basta use na na ito kailangan nyo communicate di ba li ulitin natin yan pag diniscuss natin yung how you're going to merge changes pero unahan na natin kayo again yun Uh, you have to collaborate with the person kung saan meron kayong problema dun sa merging. So, yung next is a four. Uh, that's another point na kailangan yung pagtunan ng pansin. Always, always test your code before committing. Never, <laughs> never commit any code na hindi nyo na test. Kasi, think about it this way. Kunwari, meron kayong... Uh, tawag mo rito, meron kayong team. Sabihin natin, uh, you have 10 developers and sabihin natin, 5 to 10 testers. Kung nag-commit ka just before nag-create ng build at sira yun, at hindi nag-compile yung program, kumari, gumamit kayo ng isang compile language, kumari Java, kinumit nyo yung code, hindi nag-compile, hindi na-build yung system nyo. Ilan, eh, sabihin natin, ilang minuto, ilang oras of Uh, work. Sabihin natin, uh, it takes 10 minutes to fix that. So, nasira na yung productivity ng around 20 people, 10 minutes each. So, multiply mo yun, ilang oras na nawala sa team nyo. Considering na you could check for that problem in less than 5 minutes. So, yung mga cases na yun, which we call broken build, nasira nga yung build kasi meron kayong kinumit na hindi, ano, hindi tama, That's a very common problem, especially in inexperienced developers. And, uh, well, uh, mahirap yan. Mas saan ako na-raise yan. Paulit-ulit kayo nagbe-break ng build at na-raise yan sa management. Siguradong hindi kayo makakuha ng raise. Anyway, so yung uh, second point, don't break builds. Yung third point ay dun sa six, which is when you're committing, always put a commit message. Parang ito yung dun sa, uh, minention ko na ito before, dun sa ating intro. Pero again, the reason for this is kung hindi kayo naglagay ng commit message, which is possible in certain version control systems, kunwari tinatamad kayo, mahirap mag-backtrack. <laughs> mahirap, kunwari meron kayo nakita bug, or meron kayong uh, yan, mas, uh, changes na kailangan gawin. Kunwari, may pinadagdag sa yung isang feature. Kung hindi mo alam kung saan mo nagay yung feature na yun, kung hindi mo minention dun sa, ano, dun sa, dun sa commit message mo, hindi makikita, syempre, sa history, at hindi, hindi gan kadali i-track down. So, yeah, napaka-importante yung commit message. Di ba, le, uulitin natin to ulit later dun sa part about committing. Pero, again, Unaan ko na kayo kasi napaka-importante ito. Marami ang nakikita ng mga developer hindi naglalagay ng commit message. At, uh, well, maraming cases na rin ako rin sumalo dyan sa mga bug nila at nahirapan rin na maghanap. So, yun. So, yun tatlong kailangan yung pag-focusan dun sa anim na steps na yun. Anyway, balik tayo. So, balik tayo rito sa ating... Uh, Uh, steps na diniscuss. So, when you're going to commit something to a client-server version control system, you have to keep in mind yun nga, itong six steps na to. But, you have to focus on some stuff like handling conflicts later na discuss. Uh, retesting your code, it's uh, para hindi tayo magkaroon ng broken build. And finally, yung pag nagko-commit tayo ng changes, always add a commit message. So, yung step 3 and 6, di-discuss ulit natin yan when we come to uh, merging uh, conflicts, handling conflicts, and when we're coming to committing changes. So, that's it for yung workflow. You just have to keep these things in mind, pero hindi nyo, eh, personally, hindi naman yun talaga ito matutunan until na practice nyo siya every day. Okay, so, see you in the next lesson.